Coming up on this edition of the TV Black Box 101 podcast, I chat to actor, television host, singer-songwriter and add dancer to that list. It's versatile and all-round nice guy, Rob Mills. This is TV Black Box, bringing you the inside goss from the TV industry. Hello, gorgeous people, and welcome to another edition of the TV Black Box One on One podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. Today I'm chatting to Rob Mills, who was appearing on Dancing with the Stars and, of course, appeared in the very first season of Australian Idol and played Finn Kelly on Neighbours for around four years. Rob Mills, thanks for joining me. Great to be here, mate. Thanks so much for having me. Very excited. Awesome. Well, look, you appeared in the in Dancing with the Stars back in 2009, and I believe you were eliminated second after Spider Everett. It was a fairly early exit. What, why did you jump at the chance to, uh, to come back? Was it redemption, the fun of the show, refining your skills? What was it? You said it all. Um, <laughs> you basically summed it up for me. Uh, definitely redemption, redemption, redemption. Um, I, I couldn't believe I got kicked up second. I mean, I, it was definitely better than Spider Everett, but I was, I was better than a few others in that group. Um, I remember Helen telling me, this is um, Helen Ritchie, the judge on Dancing with the Stars and also famous ballroom dancer, Helen Ritchie, saying that she thought I was the best dancer in that group. So, look, if I didn't do it, if I didn't do it for me, I did it for Helen to come back to prove to her that I could, I could dance a bit better. I was going to say that maybe that you were robbed a little bit back then because you did the the cha-cha, the tango um, and the jive. And from memory, you were getting mostly like sevens. So it's not like you were getting twos and threes or anything like that. You think you were robbed? Look, obviously the people at home just maybe thought I was safe or they're just like, I hate that guy. Uh, Let's get him out. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I just remember having a great time the last time I did it. Um, and and same same goes uh, for this time as well. Just had had the best had the had the best time uh, working with Sriani last time and Alana this time. Yeah, incre- incredible um, performers. And it was just great to be back on stage, mate. After two years of a pandemic, um, not not a lot of gigs, so it was actually really just good to to be out there um, and doing something that scares the absolute bejesus out of me. <laughs> It, it was like, um, a bit of a different setup this time. I think Dan McPherson was hosting back in 2009 and Paul McCurio was not one of the judges, but Sonia, Todd, Helen and Mark were all there. And you also did your previous season with Kylie Gilly. So was it nice having the uh, the gang back together? Yeah, it was great to, great to have Kyle's. Kyle's just so lovely. Um, even just a couple of weeks ago, she said, do you want to come and host the morning show with me? Larry's off doing the chase at the moment. I said, sure. So, yeah, we've got a really good... Um, a uh, really good relationship. She's she's so much fun and she loves the show more than anyone that I know. She absolutely <laughs> like froths on it. Not the ones that she's in. Um, she's terrified every time she goes on stage, but she just loves it so much. Um, and I love that about Kylie. She just gives it absolutely everything uh, to to the performance. But yeah, it was good to be back on stage. Good to be um, good to have Todd there and Helen and um, and also yeah, Mark. He was he's he, we had we had drinks after the show had finished and. He's a really, really good guy as well. There's a, it's, just, it's a really lovely, warm kind of uh, cozy feeling. I mean, apart from Todd, who just <laughs> gives me crap marks, but um, <laughs> it's just, it's such a great show. I think at the moment, it's with the devastation that's happening across the world um, and and here right here in our backyard, uh, with the storms that are coming that are and the floods that are ripping through the country, it's it's maybe a nice escapism um, for for a lot of people at the moment. Yeah, absolutely, and um, and it's rating really well, so it's really resonating with people at this time for sure. Um, for the first night you're on this season, there seems to be two groups: the ones that got either perfect scores of forty or near that score, and then another group mm. that was scored sort of in the twenties. Now you received higher in that group with twenty-seven, but it must be a, a lot harder being in the All Star series because some of the other contestants are coming off previous wins or or they're actually grand finalists, including uh, Kylie Gillies. Oh yeah, mate. I, I think I've been stitched up here again. I'm in the, I'm in a very good um, group B is very good. Uh, group B is incredible. Um, so yeah, I, I remember I was dancing, um, I think nearly last, I think the first, the first week and everyone had been getting tens. I'm like, am I going to get tens? I mean, I've been practicing pretty hard. Maybe I'll get tens. And then I got sixes and sevens and I couldn't like my face didn't lie. If you watch it back, I am so shattered. 
<laughs> like my face doesn't lie at all. So I was mortified. I was like, oh, I thought I thought I was better than that. <laughs> oh. But I'm up against like there were times throughout the recording that even I think Todd or Helen says you, you can't even tell who the professional is. Um, yeah. with some of the dancing that we're seeing this this year on the competition so I, everyone has worked so hard to um to bring their dancing up to um you know an elite level and i think you're going to see a lot more tens this series yeah, for sure uh the, the performance that you did in episode two where you started off in in bed and then you came out with that sort of disco type outfit lots of yeah. acting in there does it does it make it a little bit easier combining your acting skills into the dancing Oh mate, that's 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 what's been really fun for Alana and I throughout the um the process. Um, she would help me with the dancing, and I would help her with the acting. So we're actually a really good team for for one another. So yeah, I I love the um little bit of acting stuff. We've got incredible uh, creative, um, creative direction from Kelly Abbey. She's um she's an ex- exceptional human being as well, and really brings a, such a wonderful energy to, um to the pre show to to during the filming um and also to our rehearsals. She's um. Yeah, she really helps. She's just such a great storyteller, um, and not just through you know um, through her words, but through, just through her de- through her dance and direction. So that really, I think it really comes through with um, with everyone's dancing. But yeah, she, we we worked really hard on our on our acting, and um, I was helping Alana through that stuff as well. That that was really fun. That uh, the bed and the sort of disco type thing was awesome. So oh, um, it was great. Have you and Kylie remained friends since the first season? I mean, I ask that because you've obviously got the call to come in and co-host the morning show. And by the way, you were perfect in that role. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, I loved, I loved it. Um, yeah, Kyle's, I mean, I'm always popping up um, on different networks, doing uh, little fill-ins and little things here and there. So, um, yeah, Kylie and I have always remained, um, yeah, I wouldn't say like super tight, but yeah, we're buddy buddy. Every time if we bump into each other, there's always a yeah. good chat and a good yarn. She's, as I said, she's just such a lovely, uh, a lovely woman who, who loves the show. And uh, she was a really, um, she was she was really great the other day on the, the morning show with me. She was helping guide me through the whole thing. We had a lot of laughs throughout the show. So yeah, but I, I hope there's more opportunities um, for that. So Larry, if you need to go off and do some more shows, it's okay. I can, <laughs> I can, I can fill in. He's always busy doing the chase, so I'm sure you'll uh, get another call. Um, you spoke there about um, you know popping up in other net- networks, doing little bits and pieces. You are very versatile in your work. I mean, stage, musicals, acting, presenting, dancing. Now, where, where do you find yourself gravitating towards these days? Is there a is there a passion in there? Oh, uh, mate, I think I've always, and I said this many many years ago when I first did Australian Idol, that if there was opportunities in any field. I'd, I'd love to give it a go. I, I love doing things that scare me. I love, um, it's a broad spectrum when you say, I, I, every time I, if I go um, anywhere and says, what's your occupation? I just say entertainer um, because it's, I kind of do a bit of everything. Um, I don't really gravitate to anything other than to the work, to the job that gets you to the next job. Um, I really love acting. It's a great form of storytelling. Um, I love taking photos. I love making like little short films and little clips, little skits little songs, um, been doing a bit more comedy sort of stuff with some friends recently, especially during the pandemic when we needed a laugh. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, as I said, entertainment comes in all different forms. So as long as I can um, keep keep doing that sort of stuff or um, finding finding work, um, I'm, not, I'm not too fussed in what I do, as long as it's um, telling good stories and hopefully telling good Australian stories. Well, I have to ask, um, I suppose even if the answer is yes, you can't actually tell me yes, but have you been approached at all for Australian Idol, um, either in the host or judging role? Or if not, at least, is that something you'd be interested in? Oh, mate, I've been been pushing this barrow for a couple of years, knowing that we're coming up to our 20th um, anniversary for Australian Idol. I would love the opportunity to to be a part of the show, um, Yeah, whether it's a hosting role or whether, whether it's some sort of mentoring role for the uh, for the people coming on the show or even judging would be great. would love it. Love the opportunity. So if you're listening, network execs, uh, I'm here if you need. Uh, easy, easy to work with, uh, happy to be here, uh, sometimes funny and lovely Rob Mills. <laughs> <laughs> they, I know the ones at Seven, they definitely li- listen to these podcasts, so uh, for sure. Look, I, oh, I want to talk about your role in uh, Neighbours. You were a villain in the show, uh, Finn Kelly. I mean, you did drown. Misunderstood, Aaron. Misun- misunderstood. I'm going to stop you there. Um, uh. Some say villain, some say misunderstood. So that's okay. Look, we all, 
you know, you get, don't put me in a box. That's all I'm saying. Don't put me in a box. Okay. <laughs> you were a misunderstood a person uh, in right. the role of uh, Finn <laughs> Kelly. Um, you did drown, but that didn't stop um, them from bringing you back in a bit of an unusual way. Now that the show is finishing up, can they bring Finn back yet again? Any calls yet? <laughs> The ghost of Finn Kelly did come back a year after I died, uh, which I loved. I loved being in the um, in the uh, in, in the house with, with in the Kennedy household with with Susan and tormenting her again. Um, yeah, I, I went out. I did. I think I definitely went out peak soap, um, digging a grave for Susan and then tripping in, tripping and falling and cracking my head and the the grave filling up with water and me drowning in my own grave. I think that's um, that's peak soap. I don't know if you can bring me back, but I. I would, I would love to see some of the old cast come back, um, not just the, the big names of the, the Kylies and the, the Jasons and the Guy Pierce and um, Margot Robbie and, and all that, but all the, all the actors who have come through, it would be great to, to have some sort of cameo, I think, you know, in the, in the last few months. I'm sure the, the writers are busily working, trying to work out how best to, how we, how do we do this? How do we close it out? You know, do we finish with a Sharknado? Do we do we burn down Erinsborough and Paul Robinson gets his dream and wish of doing a development of condos? And um, I, I don't know how they could end it, but I would love to see some um, some of the old some of the old cast come back for sure. Well, let's play uh, writer now. How would you end Neighbours? Oh, mate, I I think as I said, maybe a Sharknado. Maybe um, <laughs> I like the idea of, I really like the idea of um, Carl and Susan saying goodbye to the street um, or maybe Clive Palmer knocks it down and turns it into a, you know, a dinosaur theme park or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Put, the, put those ideas forward. See how you go. <laughs> I don't know. I, or like, yeah. Or it's a big fire or it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's some sort of tornado. It, I, I do like the idea of just it's Carl, it's um, Dr. Carl and Susan saying goodbye to the street, and yeah. they were they were you know they were the voice and they were the the moral compass of of Erinsborough for for all that time. So, or maybe yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I, I just love to be in the room though. I'm sure they're they're busily working through that that sort of storyline because they you know they, they're writing three months ahead, so it it must be towards the end now. Yeah, and and Tony waving at the back saying goodbye as well. Uh, Maybe there's a big lawsuit. <laughs> Tony's representing the street against Paul Robinson. I don't. I don't know. I don't know oh, what it yeah. is. Great. Um, I want to move on and talk. Um, wondering that if you've actually spoken to any of the cast of late after the news was revealed that Neighbours would be ending. I mean, I, I gather you have. Um, if so, how, how are the Neighbours family holding up? Yeah, I spoke to Ellen and Jackie um, most recently, and. Some of the young guys, they're doing okay. Um, my mate Ben Hall is just—he's just finishing up on the show anyway. Um, I know that Benny and, and Zimmer um, and all those those guys, the younger kids, have you know, the, some of them bought houses and you know now they're trying to work out how they're going to maybe pay the mortgage. And oh, um, I'm sure that I'm sure they'll I'm sure they'll be fine. They're all incredible actors and incredible hardworking people, so I, I'm sure they won't have any trouble finding work. Um, but Al, Al was saying that he's looking forward to probably just doing more music. Um, um, but yeah, it, it will be sad. I think for it's such a great relationship between Jackie and um, and Al for, over all those years. Oh, I haven't reached out to to Ryan yet, but I, I definitely will in the next um, in the next few weeks. It, it is a bit sad. Um, it's a wonderful family, um, an incredible crew out there with so many memories. Um, not just working on that show, but some of the crew that have come through that show. And I'm not just talking about the soundies and the, the camera operators, the, the ADs who have gone on to, you know, bigger and better things, the writers, the ed the editors yeah. who do, I think, probably the hardest job on that show. They are editing two feature films worth of footage every week, turning it into six episodes. Like it's just, it's insane, the amount of footage. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm pretty I'm pretty sad for everybody. Um, pretty sad for Australia because um, I, I really feel like they're, they're tackling some really big stories um, and some big issues in a really kind um, and thoughtful way, especially the last few years. Um, a lot of diversity chat, a lot of um, quality chat, um, and also moving away from different sort of stereotypes in, um, in Australian culture. I think they've been at the forefront of really championing good, 
wholesome, um, yeah, Australian values over over the last thirty seven years. And come at me if you like, but I think they've done a pretty good job of, um, yeah, of being at the forefront, having the first um, gay marriage on television, having the first trans person on on television. I, mm. uh, yeah, it's they're they're, they're incredible. I think they've done an incredible job. Do you think it's going to have a devastating sort of impact on the Australian arts industry? I mean, you've even mentioned the amount of opportunities it's created for not just actors, but you know, but the crew as well. Or do you think there's just going to be other ways of having opportunities through, I guess, streamers or other people that are picking up Australian content? Yeah, maybe, maybe that's it. Look, maybe the the time of the soap, the soap is 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 done. You know, this has been running for thirty seven years. Um, no, I know Home and Away is still running pretty strong, um, but there aren't many soaps around the world that are that are that are you know that are having still a lot of success. So maybe our appetite for entertainment has changed. Um, maybe it does open the door for, uh, like you say, more Australian drama or different kinds of drama. Or uh, I really just hope they don't lose the facility out there at Channel Zero. That's the old in, at Nutter Wadding. So. You know, it's that's where they film Prisoner. There's so much history there. I really hope it doesn't get. Um, I was joking before about um, Paul Robinson turning it into um, into apartments, but um, I hope they don't actually sell it off and turn it into apartments. I think it's it's got so much history um, and so many great studios in there. I think Screen Victoria or Screen Australia could maybe turn it into a working school as well. You um you went as far as uh, calling on the prime minister to save neighbours. What did you hope or think that the government could do to save neighbours, or is it sort of put more funding back into the arts, or what were you hoping with that? I, mean, I think it's to put more funding back into the arts. We've seen over the last few years that um, this government, the coalition, has just disregarded, and, and I'm pretty sure they we were just non-essential, um, yeah. which is kind of sad when you think of it. What was everyone doing in the pandemic but watching um, TV, watching movies, streaming uh, music, like doing doing art, doing projects. With that, that's all under the arts umbrella. And then to say that we're not essential is like, um, it's very <laughs> essential right now. In fact, it's it's the most essential thing that we need. It's the thing that brings us all together is storytelling and art and creative things. Um, yeah, look, there's an election coming up. I definitely <laughs> won't be voting for someone who doesn't think that arts are important. Um, I... Look, whether the government should step in to save um, a show that has hundreds of jobs um, and makes, you know, I think it's a great calling card and a great business card for, um, it's a great advertisement for Australia. I don't know. I, obviously, it doesn't make enough money for the government. It's not a mining job, you know, which has probably tens of jobs or hundreds of jobs, but they make more money. So, I, yeah, I, I would say arts are far, are far more, more important. As a um, as a calling card than sending out coal. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's let's go right back now. Um, even before Australian Idol, um, I guess growing up, what led you down this path? Now I understand that you were very sort of musical in high school. Was your was your family musical? What what led you to all this? Uh, mate, I've always been I've always been singing ever since I was a little kid. Mum, mum famously took me to karaoke when I was quite young um, and I <laughs> loved it. I just loved being on stage. I, I think I sang soon after that at a school concert um, in front of my peers at the end of the year concert and my brother had done musical theatre. I remember seeing him in Bye Bye Birdie when I was when he oh, was wow. maybe in year seven year, or year eight. Yeah. Um, I was in primary school and I was like, oh, he's pretty good. And my brother one day came home from school uh, sorry, came home from work. He was working at the pub. Uh, he came home the next day. He's like, I sang with the band last night. I was like, what? You sang with the band? He's like, yeah, I sang with the band. Like, How did you sing with the band? Because all they heard me singing backstage one day and then I they, they let me get up and have a sing. So I thought that was the coolest thing. And obviously, you know, like most young kids, they want to be like their older siblings. And I was like, well, I'm going to do that. So yeah, soon after I got myself into singing at school, singing in bands. Um, Dad always loved music as well. He was in bands when he was a kid. I don't think he was very good, but he tells me he was singing in garages and stuff, singing old Beatles and stuff when he was a kid. But we always had music on in the house. Um, my grandmother loved those old school um, Frank Sinatra movies with uh, with Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby and um, 
parents took me to musicals when I was when I was much younger. So I didn't realize that it was something that I could actually do professionally um, as a as a job until maybe after school I started singing in bands and yeah I did that three or four nights a week and didn't really think that I could be a professional um, musical guy until I did um, Grease the Arena Spectacular. So yeah, and after that I was like, oh. I could, I could do this. I mean, I've got a lot of work to do. I need to learn how to sing properly. I need to learn how to dance and to, uh, and to act. So I just took lots of singing lessons, dance lessons and acting lessons. And yeah, just worked really hard with the opportunity that I had. Well, the, the, the dancing lessons paid off, obviously. Now you ended up. Oh, on mate, you'll, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But, uh, look, you'll, we'll see how it plays out this series. Um, I think I was, I, I think I'm, look, I'll stick with, I'm a smart mover. I don't think I'm a triple threat <laughs> just yet. I'm only guessing that the Australian Idol experience would have been something mysterious, if that's a good word, because every other season, new contestants would have been aware of the process, the popularity, the expectations, but you would have been going in totally blind because that being the first season, um, not even knowing if the show would be a success or not. What what was it like for you and the, and the, the first lot of contestants? Naivety is probably a good word for it, Aaron. <laughs> um, at 21, I didn't really have a good understanding of who I was as a person, um, but knew that I really loved singing, loved performing. Um, and this was a really just a fun experience for me. Um, it was the first time I've ever been on a plane before. The first time I'd, I'd wow. been, yeah, the first time I'd sort of, I had taken caravan trips and stuff as a kid with, with the family. This is the first, yeah, my flight to Sydney was the very first time that I'd been on a plane. So... <laughs> Wow. Looking back now, I'm like, oh, I've been on so many flights. It's ridiculous, but I still get the same joy getting on the plane. It's bloody great. Um, so I, I love the experience. I love meeting new people. I love meeting people from all across the country and all different walks of life and different experiences. Um, it was a really great um, eye-opening experience and got to meet some really incredible people. Um, and instead of singing 30 songs a night in a pub, I only had to sing one song. I was like, literally, it's half a song. So, like, this is great. <laughs> don't, have you, to blow up my, don't have to blow up my voice singing 30 songs. You, you did smash out some big songs, though, didn't you? I mean, I know they're only, you know, 90-second versions, but Robbie Williams, Westlife, Noise Works, Rude and Keating, must have been a blast. Or it was also, it must have been nerve-wracking as well. Super nerve-wracking. Um, I, 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 if I have my time again... Um, I'll probably choose a couple of different songs. I, I think I went with songs that I thought people would like. And there's one thing I teach kids these days, it's sing something that really resonates with you. Um, that's how you show your true self or your authentic self is singing a song for someone else is not really, you're not really doing it, doing it for, for yourself. It's not really an authentic version of yourself. So I think I was sort of putting on a mask a bit, trying to sing I mean, there's no doubt I didn't. I, I liked those songs, but I think there were probably songs that probably resonated with me, and maybe I had, I was not self aware enough at the time to to realise that. Um, but that's okay. That's that comes with maturity and growth and um, learning all about self worth and all those sorts of things that you learn later on in life. So yeah, I always tell the kids if you are going to do a show like this or do an audition, find something that really resonates with yourself and um, helps tell your story better. The, the, I guess the versatility uh, kicked in quite early because soon after that, you were in a presenting role um, after Idol. You, didn't you do a little hidden camera show for, for 10 from memory? Yeah, this is true, Aaron. This is good research. Well done. It's called, it was called Stooged. I think it was a, a Denmark show, a Danish show um, called Spoofed. I'm like, I'm glad they changed the name here in Australia um, to Stooged. But the... Hidden cameras were, I would say, the size of a small fridge, and they were made of, <laughs> and they were, and they were made of mirrors. So I'm like, I don't think they were that hidden in the house. So I don't think the show worked that well. <laughs> Technology has come a long way since then, mate. I gotta say, technology has come a long way. Absolutely. And then, I but think- I really did. I really loved. I really loved. I really loved doing it. Though. I really loved. Um, uh, it was, it was a bit of a laugh, like working with Yvette Duncan. She was great and helping people, you know, have, have to sort of stooge their mates. I think was, I, I really loved it. I loved the opportunity. It was great. Good to have a laugh. Well, another blast from the past. You did that late night quiz show on, on nine called The Mint. Um, 
I mean, I guess, do you cherish the opportunity to hone your presenting skills? I mean, with an opportunity like that. I mean, it, it's different, but it's, it's, you know, late night, something that's, um, I, I guess it's another type of versatility that you've um, put under your belt. Oh, mate, that, like a lot of people will go to a presenting school, pay thousands of dollars to learn how to stand in front of a camera and talk. We got paid to talk and ramble for, for four hours a night. <laughs> like I was some, some weeks I did three shifts. Most, most weeks was like one or two shifts in the week, but from midnight till three or four in the morning, we would just talk to the camera and talk about your day, talk about why someone should join the game or talk about, yeah, it was, it was an insane amount of talking, but yeah, you definitely, it definitely helped um, hone your skills and get more comfortable talking in front of a camera. So yeah, to get paid to do that sort of stuff. I mean, it wasn't a lot of money, but still it was, it was a job. It was a gig. Yeah. And as I said, yeah, you, you, you learn, you learn on the job. And that's, I think it's been a lot of my career is learning on the job. You, you went a bit more big production style um, with the Revive Young Talent Time. Um, that was a great show, a lot of fun. I remember being in the audience for that one. Um, that must have been a, a big weight on your shoulders having like the past history of the show, you know, which is a fond memory to so many Australians. I think we were probably robbed with that show being being cancelled, but what, what was your memories of that production? I loved it. Um, meeting Johnny Young uh, for the very first time over in Perth, um, what a gentle, what a gentle and a gentle man. And, and actually in the true sense of the word, he's a gentleman, like just all he ever wanted and all he still ever wants is to empower young people to be the best performers. So I can sort of relate with Johnny and I was really, you know, to be given the, the keys to the, to the phrase, good night, Australia. Uh, that's, it's, that's, that's pretty wonderful. Uh, we had a great, had a great team, um, and I really loved it. As I said, I loved empowering the young kids, helping them out with their rehearsals or um, trying to pass down some words of wisdom. He's also from someone who's still trying to, to work stuff out as well as it, you know, I was sort of mid twenties at the time when we did that show, but yeah, I loved reveled in the opportunity to work on a live shiny floor show, working with great floor managers, great camera crew and directors in the truck and um, learning the sort of, the art and the craft of the sort of script, script writing as well. And yeah, I, I really loved it and would love the opportunity to do, to do more of that sort of stuff. But some of the kids that came off the show, I mean, Benny, who was in the, uh, the little bandits crew, he's, he's now doing neighbors. Um, there's a bunch of guys that have come through high five. There's, um, Aiden, Aiden, I just saw recently in Jagged, Jagged Little Pill, the musical. He was also oh. in Fangirls, the musical. Um, he's doing really well. He's writing some really good music as well. He's the Had one a I remember with him for some reason, that Aiden. Yeah. You know, he's so great. Like, could Dan, like he's, a, he's a real triple threat, that kid. Um, such a lovely young boy. Um, yeah, they've, they've just, everyone's gone on to, to do incredible things. Um, so, I'm, yeah, I'm super proud of the kids. Well, you were first with Australian Idol, but you were also first with the Masked Singer Australia. Um, you're revealed to be the wolf. When you were pitched this show, were you thinking, what the hell? I mean, like, I have to dress yeah. up as a, as a wolf and then I get unveiled. And what, what drew you to doing that show? Oh, just the fun, the fun of it, mate. Um, I'm pretty good at saying yes to, to silly stuff. Um, <laughs> and to things that you just, you know, can take the piss out of yourself a bit. So I uh, loved it, loved the concept. It's so strange and wacky and weird. Um, but once again, I think it was a great show for the escapism for, for audiences. Mm. It, it was a really good family fun show. There was no, uh, there's no drama in it. You know, no, no one was trying to create drama. Like a lot of reality TV is, is all about trying to create drama. So you mm. feel better about your life. <laughs> so this, this actually just brought nothing but pure joy to everyone. Oh no, it brought joy to me just being part of the show. Uh, but also it was so hot in, in, oh, in, yeah. those, in those costumes, but at the same time, like we're only out there for, you know, a couple of minutes. There's a few times I've heard a few people say that they, they were like, come on, Osha, no more questions. I'm actually, I'm dying in here, <laughs> but, but you couldn't tell anyone. You couldn't tell Osha. You couldn't speak. You weren't allowed to do anything. It's, it's the whole thing of um, secrecy is, uh, the, the full cloak and dagger of it. It's elite. It's an elite level. Like no one knew anything. I couldn't tell my friends. I couldn't tell anyone at Neighbours when I was filming it. So I just kept telling them I was off to do some corporate gigs and yeah, 
It's crazy. You know, I was wondering what the excuses were, well, keeping it a secret for everyone. So just I'm um, off for a corporate gig, or that was pretty much it, was it? Yeah, just off through. I've got a junket, or I've got to just do a couple of corporate gigs. I got a wedding, or yeah, just whatever whatever you could make up. Um, you just had to make it up. Let's talk about music for a moment. Are, are there any plans to release anything new, or is is that still a passion? Um, look, I'm never going to rule it out, but I, I don't think it is the, the passion for me. I, I think I realized a few years after dro- getting dropped from the label that I realized it's, I love performing. I love singing. Um, maybe the songwriting is not for me and it, it would feel disingenuous to, to just sing, uh, and release music that just wasn't really from my soul. Yeah. I have to find a really good reason for it to, I have to really connect with it to, to want to release it. Um, I, as I said, I, I, that would feel disingenuous to me and I don't want to release music for the sake of releasing music. I think it has to have a, it needs to have meaning. It needs to have a story attached to it. It needs to have a part of you um, and, and, and a story. Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the, yeah, things that have, you have to connect with it. Uh, I look at my friend who I met on Idol, Ben Abraham, who's releasing his album after like two years of putting it on hold and this sort of build up to this um unleashing of his of his soul will be uh, incredible for the world if you don't if you haven't heard of him check him out his name's ben abraham his album's going to get released this week ben abraham all right we'll check that out uh, look i know it's easy to ask you about idol and dancing and neighbors but one of your main forms of of employment i guess is on the stage and you've done it all grease hair wicked legally blonde ghost the musical and you even played jesus christ himself is there a, is there still a musical that's on your bucket list because um it sounds like you've covered it all I'd love to do, um, there's a great musical written by Sarah Bareilles called Waitress, oh. um, based on the film from the 90s with, um, yeah, it's a sort of a rom-com kind of movie. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's a really great show. I saw it over in London with Sarah Bareilles and actually her partner uh, playing Dr. Pomada. So yeah, I'd love to play Dr. Pomada uh, in that show. I think it's a really fun, beautiful, uh, kind and heartwarming show. I guess people assume that, um, you know, because you do musicals, there's heaps of dancing experience in there. Um, and so Dancing with the Stars would be a breeze. Is is there less dancing for you in musicals than one might assume? Oh, yes. A lot less dancing uh, for me. <laughs> I, I can, as I said, I, pick, I can pick up some of the Cory. I had to dance a lot in Wicked, in Dancing Through Life, um, but nowhere near as much dancing as as everyone else in the company. They're all like elite professional dancers um and this kind of dancing is ballroom so it's very different to anything i've ever done before so yeah i i I said i'm a smart mover i would hardly say that i'm a professional dancer but um i think having just the awareness in your body over years of being on stage has definitely helped and put me in good stead for picking up the steps or picking up corey or just knowing how my body sort of looks and feels and not being scared of the mirrors um when you're rehearsing even though i'm very scared I'm, I'm hoping when, when people watch this this show that they realise just how cool dancing is, not just for, for women but for, for men, that the men watch and go, ah, oh, dancing is great. It's yeah. a really good of good way of storytelling but also a really good way of connecting to someone. So, yeah, next time you're at the bar and you feel like you just want to go and have a chat, why don't you just maybe ask that uh, person that you're interested in if they would like a dance. I think that's a really good good way of connecting. Go Go a bit old school, you know? Yeah. Um, in, a, in a totally different direction, this is kind of a listener's uh, question because they love this question. Everyone loves a good blooper. Um, have you had any memorable moments of like, I don't know, forgetting lines on a stage, falling over, whether it be on stage or t- television? Was there anything that stands out for you or have you been pretty lucky? Uh, I've been pretty lucky. I'm pretty, I, tr- I try and be as professional as possible in learning on my lines, but I did forget my I, I forgot a line in wicked after doing the show for two years and not stuffing up well i fell over a few times uh but as far as lo- dropping a line i just completely forgot we're doing the line cub scene with my friend Gemma ricks who plays alphabet and i just had nothing just i ran down these stairs with this line cub in my hand my heart was racing and panting and stuff oh my god i got this I, and i just blank like I, I remember thinking do i have milk in the fridge I don't know why I'm thinking about milk 
you need to be talking about the lion cub that you're carrying and nothing came out and Gemma just did her next line and I said, thank you. <laughs> and then we went on. So I broke character. I was just like, thank you. And then, but after two years of doing a show, what are the, like on my very last show, I couldn't believe it. It was so weird. Uh, random. Um, look, just recently I saw a, a, Daily Ma- a Daily Mail article that said Rob Mills and fiancé uh, fiance Georgie stripped down at, at Cloverly Beach in Sydney after a, a, announcing their engagement. They're not always going to pick the most like glamorous photos, of course, but did you What find... are you saying, Aaron? What are you saying? What are you saying? Are you saying they look fat in those photos, Aaron? Is that what you're saying? Are you saying no, I'm no. putting a few kilos during COVID, Aaron? I personally I thought you looked fantastic, <laughs> but um <laughs> I mean, but Georgie. I just... Oh she's <laughs> wonderful. <Sorry. laughs> she looked great. Mate, I that's just what we look like at the moment. I, I when I saw those photos come up, I was like, sure. Great. That's that's exactly what we look like. We're a little bit unfit, uh, but also we're very happy and having a good life. Uh, we were down at the beach catching up with some friends, uh, actually with Chloe uh, Chloe Zool, who's doing Hamilton, and her partner Rob, uh, who's doing Home and Away at the moment. So it was good to just catch up with those guys. It was I think it was the first sunny day that we'd had in a while. Yeah. So of course was of course we're stripping down, but mate, I I don't worry about any of that stuff. I'm so my cup is very full of um self-worth from my friends and my peers so yeah I, nothing that doesn't really get to me it makes me go or oh, i should probably should probably hit the gym a little bit more oh, but <laughs> I, as i said doesn't doesn't get my um doesn't get me in the feels well i guess that's where i was leading i was wondering if you if that if you think that's sort of part and parcel of being in the spotlight or if you thought it was highly intrusive but i guess you just let it brush uh, we posted photo we, we, we probably posted videos and photos of herself at the beach with with the with Chloe and Rob that day anyway with with us in our in our swimmers so uh, what what are you gonna do like you do know it's a backhanded compliment though because if you, if they're taking pictures of you on the beach it means you're in the art uh, in the you know the A list group now oh thank you my brother still like I I still like to think I'm sitting around the D list and I'm okay with that as well I'm happy with my level I'm never striving to uh, to rise up the list of celebrity that's for sure I just like um, having having a job and having um having work, mate. That's the only thing I'm going for. And quickly, let's finish up with going back to Dancing with the Stars. Your next episode is this Sunday. Uh, what yes. can we What can we expect from you this Sunday? I'm pretty sure it's a quick step. Um, and it is pretty much what you think it is. It's stepping very quickly. <laughs> um, so a lot of um, think of a, a horse would canter. It's like a canter. It's like that kind of vibe. Um, so yeah, it's a quick step. The brief is great. It's like a 1950s, um, kind of costumey kind of thing. I'm asking the girl out on the date. Um, but she's really, she's the one that's wearing the, you know, to, I'll, I'll say the old school term. She's the one wearing the pants, but she's the one who's taking control of the sort of, um, of the dance. She's, um, she's the one that's leading me, um, which I think is really cute. I think it's uh, really empowering uh for for women for for this dance um and I, yeah I, I really like it it was super fun to put together i've got a, a really good feeling that you're going to do better than back in two, 2009 for sure i'm going to put some money on you for that one um but with uh, quite a few contestants getting perfect scores it is going to be a, a difficult part to the uh to the grand final let alone for anyone anyone actually to win um but yeah, let's let's wait and see. So, what's next for you after Dancing with the Stars? Oh, a few things, mate. But I'm actually not allowed to talk about any of it right now. You picked a picked a bad time for an exclusive, um, but, <laughs> but 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 so, soon I'll be able to reveal all. But uh, the next the next year is looking really busy, so that's that's good. Um, and I'm, can I say that I'm so wrapped that theatre is back open that people are um, heading back out to the theatres to see their plays, to see musicals, to see comedy shows. Um, to taking in a live show and supporting the arts. I think confidence is high. Um, and, yeah, there's some really great shows that are opening up at the moment across the country. So, yeah, get down and check them out. I'm sure everyone would love your support. Absolutely. Well, good luck uh, with the rest of Dancing with the Stars and those super secret future projects. Um, we'd love to see Thanks, you back mate. on the morning show too. And I know in, in another interview you said Kylie did all the heavy lifting, but honestly you were great. So that's... Um, you know, uh, I hope you're back there as well. But thank you for joining me at uh, TV Black Box again today, Rob. Cheers, Mar- Cheers. Cheers so much. And thank you so much for your kind words. You're a very lovely man. 
thank you. Uh, Rob Mills, uh, part of the cast of Dancing with the Stars, now screening on Seven. Well, that's it for another TV Black Box 101 podcast. You can catch all the latest television news and exclusives at tvblackbox.com.au, which hopefully will include Rob Mills as the host or judging person on Australian Idol. Wouldn't that be awesome? That'd be great. That'd be great. That'd be great, mate. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for your company. Until next time, look after yourselves and bye for now.